excited to be in December? Yeah, I am. Ooh. Why? Why are you excited? Because I love Jesus. New Year, because you love Jesus? Basketball. Basketball oh. Snowman. <laughs> you can't forget the snow. Mean, this church, right? Yeah. Man, we've lost George to another sport. <laughs> oh, okay. What else? What else gets you excited about December? Christmas. Snow. Another day, month closer than the year. Charlie Brown Christmas. <laughs> Christmas story. Yeah. Christmas story. Elf. Scrooge. Yeah. It's Scrooge. Scrooge. Yeah. 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 Chris is wondering if anybody would care that it's Jesus' birthday. Not really, but we celebrate it, right? Yeah. <laughs> All right, stay there. All right, so this is a live cafe. My live tree. I saw this a live tree. It's a little out of focus, but that's the only one they had. So we've been talking a lot over even the last couple of years about sowing seed, and you reap what you sow, and we want to live a harvest. We want to live fruitful lives. So if you look at that tree. I'm hoping you're starting to see a little bit of you in that tree. How alive <coughs> are you in Christ? <coughs> with the fruits of the Spirit, with good works, with fellowship, with salvation and mercy, and all that kind of stuff. We're supposed to be deeply rooted, bearing fruit. Right? Not worthless. Doing nothing. Just sucking it in. Right? We're supposed to be putting it out. So, I just want to encourage you. So how many of you took my challenge two weeks ago for a 40-day fast? Courtney did. Rob did. Oh, now we're failing on the front row. Oh. Ask me how many cups of coffee I've had since that day. One. How many cups of coffee have you had? Zero. 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 Ohio? What's that? Oh, H. 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 Oh, come on. <laughs> you had to go there, didn't you? <laughs> so All right, so how many of you have kept your fast? Rob and Courtney, Diane has kept her fast. Crystal's kept her fast. It's not that bad. Well, yes, it is. <laughs> I would really like a cup of coffee. I'm in recovery, so mine don't know what no, I know it counts. Now, why are we fasting? Whatever it is we chose to fast. Because it makes us better people? No. no. It makes God do things for us? No. How does it make you stronger? Spiritually. Okay. It makes you spiritually stronger. So I have to remind myself when I really smell like a fresh pot of coffee, that's the worst. <laughs> like if you're quitting smoking, you know, and you smell a fresh lit cigarette, isn't that like... You could just eat that, right? Yeah. Yeah. Even a cigarette smells good to me. Pastor Deanna, may I speak? Thank you. Yes, I gotta sir. Say something. If you're on topic. I am on topic. I gotta give uh, honor where honors due. My wife gets up every morning and makes me coffee and then doesn't drink it. Oh. Thank you, darling. So, here's the point. When a lot of you will say, I want to do this differently. I want to do this better. I want to grow in the Lord. I want to get to this point. But you can't turn down a little lust of the flesh. That really tends to weaken your walk. Right? It doesn't change how much God loves you. It doesn't change that He's forgiven all your sins. It doesn't change... That heaven is a free thing for us. It doesn't change that. But when you want to grow in the Lord, you want to mature in the Lord, you want your faith to be stronger, because the Bible talks about a growing, exercising of our faith. And there are certain things that you can do with a stronger faith. Pray for the sick and they're healed, right? And so this fasting that I've challenged you to, and it's never too late to start, we, at the time, two weeks ago, we had 40 days till the end of the year. I said, hey, that's a good number. 40 is the number of trial and tribulation. It's the number of days Jesus fasted in the desert. Only it wasn't from coffee or a cigarette. It was from food. Food. He fasted for 40 days. So that he knew that the spirit inside of him was in charge, not his fleshly desires, cravings, or needs, not even his own thinking. 
but his spirit, that part that's holy and perfect, that was in charge. And we've got it wrong. Our flesh lives on top in the king chair, and it tells us what to do. And God tries to speak in there. He tries to come out, and we shove him down. Some of us take a shovel, and we pound him on the head. We don't want to hear what he has to say. And so I just want to encourage you, maybe start your fast over. You can do it. And at the end of 40 days, what you have acquired is the spiritual fruit of self-control. That's all. And you'll look a little more like that tree every day. So I want to encourage you for your fasting. And I also want to warn you that on New Year's Eve, I will have the one big cup of Starbucks. That is the question, though. I'm buying. I love video games. The higher I fast, I'm not Does anybody have a suggestion for George to fast for video games? Just a reading? How about you take your unit out of the wall and give it to someone for 40 days? Here's the truth, George. You asked, you interrupted my sermon, I'm going to tell you. If you don't really want to play video I'm games, yep. take the video unit out of your apartment. If you really don't want to give it up, then leave it right there. The truth is you really don't want to give it up. Right. Okay, so <laughs> moving on. <laughs> That'll teach you to interrupt. <laughs> okay, let that be a warning. Moving on. Okay, so I have two weeks to preach this theme. This is I can't believe we're at the end. I can't believe it. We're going to be focusing on this for two weeks. I'm going to move on to my last service before Christmas. And then it'll be Christmas Eve the next, or New Year's Eve the next time we meet. Because we won't have Chris, we won't have service the 20th and the 24th. We're off the week of Christmas. I know we're a weird church. We don't have Christmas. We don't have church on Easter Sunday because we don't have church on Sunday. We don't have church on Christmas because many of us we have to travel out of town, and, and so we're taking that week off. So the 17th we'll meet, and then I'll see you on New Year's Eve. With the theme wow. reveal, the church will look different. We'll be here next week and the week after. But we won't be here on Christmas Eve or the Friday before. But we'll let you know. All right, so anyway, I'm getting ready. Pastor Rob's getting ready. Rob's getting ready. We're getting ready. So I have two weeks to finish up See the Unseen. How many of you have not grasped See the Unseen? Be honest. we got two weeks. Hey. Anything can happen. All right, so we're going to be in 2 Corinthians 4. That's the, the chapter we were in for the whole year. I'm going to go to the verses before our theme. You ready? This is called, Let's Revisit and Wrap Up. Good way to start. Therefore, since through God's mercy we have this ministry, we do not lose heart. Does that sound familiar? Don't give up. Rather, we have renounced secret and shameful ways. Remember the denial lesson at the beginning of Celebrate Recovery? The denial. Yeah, this is denial. We don't deny anymore our sinful ways. We recognize them. We put it out in the open. We do not use deception, nor do we distort the word of God. <coughs> On the contrary, by setting forth the truth plainly, we commend ourselves to everyone's conscience in the sight of God. Because he sees us anyway. And even if our gospel is veiled, it is veiled to those who are perishing. That means I can speak the truth, I can read the word, but if you don't want to see it and you're deceived, you're not going to see it. You're not going to understand it. You're not going to want to hear it. The God of this age has blinded the mind of unbelievers so that they cannot see the light of the gospel that displays the glory of Christ who is the image of God. The first part of this talks about live an open and honest life. That's what we have to do. The second part is, you can't determine when a person is ready to hear the gospel. You can only live it. Because your words will mean nothing if they're not ready. I can't talk anyone into faith in Christ. It's not an intellectual debate, and I will not engage a person in a debate about God. If they're not ready, they're not ready. And God's not in it. God can handle his job. And so it is my, my job to live open and honest and make my life look like that fruit tree so that you'll want to come close and go, ooh, I want to see what that's all about. Then my life will speak it, right? But many people are blinded to the truth. They believe the world's lies, 
and there's nothing you can say to convince them. And the devil's got a real good trick to create division by getting us to argue about things none of us really know the true answer to, only through the Holy Spirit that reveals it to us. So I can't talk anyone into faith in Christ, and no one can talk me out of mine. That's a good thing. You can't talk someone into salvation, and if you're truly saved, no one can talk you out of it. Because you believe what you believe. And we're going to hear that what we believe, we also speak out. So, see the unseen. It's about removing the lies and the deception and then grabbing a hold of faith. That's what this year's been about. Remove the lies that blind you so you can truly see what's important, and it's the stuff you can't see. It's the stuff of faith. The stuff of God. Verse 5. For what we preach is not ourselves, but Jesus Christ as Lord, and ourselves as your servants for Jesus' sake. For God, who said, let light shine out of darkness, great selection of songs, by the way, tonight, may his light shine in our hearts to give us the light of the knowledge of God's glory displayed in the face of Christ. But we have this treasure in jars of clay to show that this all-surpassing power is from God and not from us. Jars of clay, what's that? That's us. It is a man. Jars of clay. We are jars of clay. They are made by God. We are made by God. We are created things. We are mortal. We are breakable. We're humble. We're made of dirt. That's us. We're the jars of clay. This treasure is the light of the gospel that we hold. We hold that. And we have to remember that it's not us that this is about. It's about him. We're just a jar of clay trying to reveal his life. We are hard pressed on every side, but not crushed. Anybody feel hard pressed on every side this year? Right now, this week, yes, okay. But, but you're not crushed, you're still here. You're perplexed. How many could use a little wisdom, a little understanding? Okay, but not in despair. Persecuted, but not abandoned. You're not alone in that. Struck down, but not destroyed. Anybody feeling there? Seems like every year is do not give up here. Even though it was officially over in 2012. Right? So we feel that way, don't we? I know a lot of people feel burdened this time of year. You're like, oh, and you just want to get to the first of the year as if it's got some magic power. It doesn't. It's just another day. And you're like, oh, it took the wind out of my sails. But let me tell you, why do you feel so burdened? Why would you feel so pressed down, struck down, hard pressed on every side, right? We let everyday stresses, disappointments, failures, our needs, our heartbreak, all that stuff just starts to weigh on us because we picture how life is supposed to not be like this. I'm supposed to have this much money. I'm supposed to have this kind of relationship. My kids are supposed to do this, not this. My house is supposed to be like this. My job is supposed to be like, like this. This person should be at my job, and this person shouldn't be at my job. And every day when I go in, and a certain person is at my job, I get a little bit perplexed. A little bit persecuted. And I'm like, oh, they hadn't been there in two weeks. I'm like, good, just quit. They showed up today. Just enough time to just make me go, oh. You know, not because I don't get along with people. This person is a hindrance to, to, to what the work that we do. Anyway, but so because I have in my mind uh, the perfect job would be A, me in his office, <laughs> sitting in his chair at his desk. That would be a perfect job, right? Most of you would say that you could do your job better than your boss, right? You're like, if I was the boss. But we let those things press us down because that's how it's supposed to be or it's not right. And God really hit me hard this week. I was doing something so simple and he spoke to me and I'll get to that in a minute. But remember that those things that you go through makes you stronger, right? Like the diamond. This is a time of year where we can get coal in our stockings if we're not good. Wouldn't you prefer diamonds? I could care less about diamonds. My diamond uh, wedding ring is somewhere in the backyard in the mulch. <laughs> Every day I wake up, Bob is still there, so I figure we're still married. <laughs> With or without my wedding ring. I had a band 
you want me out? Answer <laughs> <laughs> no. that, please, dollars. quickly. Yeah, I paused, didn't I? Yes, you did. <laughs> oh, darling. But how many of you know that, you know, the worst thing in the world, the symbol of coal, means you weren't so good? But the only difference between coal and a diamond is that the diamond withstood pressure. There's a lesson in that. Those things in your life that seem so, ugh, you can either jump out of it, quit, play the video game, <laughs> never grow into the fruits of the spirit, and just be cold, or you can take the pressure and stay in. We did a message last year about staying in the pressure, staying in the pressure, staying in the pressure, because God says that works, and that works through you this, and it works through you this, and, and, and all that, and look what is result, a diamond. It was hard pressed on every side, but not crushed. God's making us into diamonds. He's refining us, like it says, like gold is refined in the fire, burning out the impurities. But we look at those with such uh, a despise, going, why is my life like this? Well, maybe it's just some things that you, you know, worked yourself into, but nonetheless, stay in it. <coughs> All right, let's move on. Verse 10, we always carry around in our body the death of Jesus so that the life of Jesus may also be revealed in our body. For we who are alive are always being given over to death for Jesus' sake so that his life may also be revealed in our mortal body. So then death is at work in us, but life is at work in you. It is written, I believe, therefore I have spoken. Since we have that same spirit of faith, we also believe and therefore speak. Because we know that the one who raised the Lord Jesus from the dead will also raise us with Jesus and present us with you to himself. All this is for your benefit, so that the grace that is reaching more and more people may cause thanksgiving to overflow to the glory of God. You see, the struggles and the sacrifices that you now endure are creating a bigger and better victory through Christ. Just like his death produced life. Your struggles produce Triumph. <coughs> Pressure produces diamonds and fruit. Does that make sense? Yep. So we keep going through this life wishing things were always different. I, we always think the grass is greener on the other side. We want this to be different. We want this to be different. We want this to be different. But wait a minute. That's so temporary. It's such a temporary thing. The struggles that you see, what's going on inside of you, it's not going to last forever. But what will last is the change that you allow Christ to work in you. Think of the situations right now that you resent and say, Lord, work that for your glory. Help me see the unseen victory in this when all I see is trouble. But he already sees the victory. Just like when, when God the Father had to turn his eyes as the Son was being crucified with all sin upon him. And for that split moment, Jesus was alone on the cross, but the Father already saw the victory. That's the only way you could do that. We all know none of us would be able to give our son over for a bunch of heathen, lying, scheming, awful people that may or may not ever appreciate it. I would never give my son over. Sorry, I wouldn't. To die for someone else, to get them off the hook. Think of the news events of the day. I think maybe that's why I was a bit glum today. I kept seeing those stupid reports of the trial today of that murder case. Oh, and <coughs> Jesus died for them. Jesus died for that couple who yep. killed the little girl. He, he died for them too. And so, yep. I think about that. Right. Surely yep. God knows that there's a better ending to this than what we see. So just think about our situations. God sees the end. See the unseen is all about knowing. There's something so much more eternal and important in our lives than whether or not the person at work I don't like is there, or whether or not I like what's in my bank account, or whether or not the paint is peeling off my house, or whether or not... My battery goes dead on my car. It doesn't matter. This life is so short. Next verse. 
Moving into our theme verse. Therefore, we do not lose heart. See, this is mentioned twice in this little chapter. So do not give up heart. Though outwardly we are wasting away. Amen. Yet inwardly we are being renewed day by day. For our light, God has a sense of humor. Their worst trouble, he calls a light and momentary trouble. It's light and momentary. And you're like, oh, it is so not light and it's so not momentary. <laughs> Our achieving, wait a minute, we don't just have to endure to endure like a torture chamber to live through it. He says they're achieving for us. There's a, there's a re reward at the end for enduring, an eternal glory that far outweighs them all. Here's our verse. So we fix our eyes not on what is seen, our junk, but on what is unseen. Since what is seen is temporary, but what is unseen is eternal. You could look at that, too, at your success. Don't focus your eyes on your success, your money, your status, your job, your car, your clothes, your relationship, your children. Don't focus on that either, because that can go. Good or bad, don't focus on what is seen. It's so temporary. But what is unseen is eternal. So think about a struggle right now that you, that you see in your life. Think about it. Think about that one thing that just is a monkey on your back. Now here's the good news. That's not going to last forever. Even if it lasts till the day you die, it's not going to last forever. Because what's on this earth won't last forever. Eternity, that lasts forever. Your troubles, your poverty, your brokenheartedness, your conflict, that will end when you breathe your last breath. Put in the message terms in a simpler way. I like this. It says, These hard times are small potatoes compared to the coming good times. The lavish celebration prepared for us. There's far more here than meets the eye. The things we see now are here today, gone tomorrow. But the things we can't see now will last forever. We've got to get out of the thoughts of this world of what I'm doing today to store up things today if that causes you conflict and strife. Earth is temporary. Your life on earth is temporary. We're sandwiched between two eternal places. The up and the down. They are eternal. This earth is so brief some people never live to see it, ever. Some people live to see it 100, 105, 110 years. Either way, it's like a vapor, the Bible says. And yet we put so much effort and misery into all that. We spend all our time, all our money on temporary things. And so this week I was in my little uh, frustrated mode of looking at the house going, ah! There's too much junk in my house. I told Bob I'm not walking into my basement one more time unless there's a dumpster in my driveway. Because the boys have lived in the basement, moved in, moved out, up and down. They just seem to just take what they need upstairs and the rest has been left down here. I've had, I don't know how many people have lived in my basement. How many people have lived in my basement? I don't know. Too many. We take in people. Anyway, the basement's a mess. And there's no lights in my house. No light bulb seems to ever want to work. So you're walking down there with your cell phone light going, oh my gosh, this whole room is full of junk. So I'm in this little mode of I'd like to just know that when I sit down, the basement's clean. And so I decided I'll clean what I can, which is under my sink in my bathroom. I can clean that. <laughs> Small <space. laughs> Oh my. So I get under there, and I'm like, okay. And I start pulling stuff out. I pulled stuff out and stuff that I've never opened. Like the shower thing my dad bought me 10 years ago. You put your shampoo, your conditioner, your lotion, and your body wash in this thing, right? You pour it all in, and it sits in the shower, and you just push it, whatever. I'm never going to put that in the shower. <laughs> never going to use that, because then I have to keep buying the same kind of soap to put in there, and uh, still in the box. So I said, all right, that's going to the thrift store. Pulled out some other stuff from the thrift store. And then I started pulling out all these supplies. I've got bar soap and, you know, gift soaps. I don't need... Body wash or perfume for Christmas. 
So I had all these sample sizes and all these things, and I'm like, well, this is cool. I was trying to figure out where can I stash all this? And I'm like, can the Lord hit me? He said, so see. It sounds silly. But it's like, you know what, little bit of money this is going to save me by stashing all this and not having to buy it for the next, whatever, eight months. <laughs> I threw it in a bag. I said, it's going to the pantry. It's going to the pantry because I, I can make care packages out of all this stuff, right? Yeah. And he's like, store up your treasures in heaven. Store up your treasures in heaven. I'm like, that's right. Everything you do today that has eternal value, you can't lose it. It's not a bad investment. It can't get lost when the stock market crashes. No one can steal it from you. The seed that you sow for eternity in lives, souls, kingdom things, you can never lose. It doesn't go bad. It doesn't expire. It doesn't spoil or turn moldy like my bread drawer. <laughs> <laughs> that looked really nasty this week after the long holiday and not really being home. You're like, ooh. <laughs> so let me ask you, what have you done this week that has any eternal value? What have you done this week that has any eternal value? Because the rest was just day-to-day -day survival. Important things. We live in this earth, but we don't live, we're not of this world, but we're in the world. We live in the moment, but we don't live for the moment. So, I would challenge and ask you, what have you done this week that has eternal value? For a short time, it could be your last day, or you could be stuck with us for another 50, 60 years. Either way, in 100 years, we're all going to be gone. You think about those that you love that have passed. We will soon know what they know. We will all know that. We're going to know it. What have you stored up over there? Store up your treasures in heaven. Eternity is a long time. Think about a long race, like a marathon. How silly would it be at the beginning of a marathon? Anyone who finishes the race gets the prize. Okay? The very first thing out of the gate, you trip and fall. So you decide, I quit. I'm walking off the side. I'm quitting the race. How stupid is that? Okay. Halfway through the race, you trip and fall. You walk off. You, you don't finish. How stupid is that? A marathon is a long race. It's an endurance thing. You just keep going. You don't lose heart. You don't lose heart. You faint not. You don't give up. You just keep going. Everything you do during the race is for getting you to the finish line, not for that moment in the race. But we're living, and the Bible says we're in a race. Finish the race. We're all caught up in where we are right now on the track. I don't like this part of the track. This part of the track is bumpy. Well, get off that part of the track. Move forward. Learn your lesson. If you keep tripping over the same obstacle, figure out how to get through it. But the goal isn't to survive that part of the race and make the race easier. It's to get to the finish line. That's where the prize is. Does that make sense? There'll be ups and downs. Here's the other thing. It doesn't matter how you start in this journey of life. It matters how you finish. Only the finish matters. You can screw up a thousand million billion times. And before you take your last breath, make it right. The warning is, yeah. But the, um, some old people would say uh, it isn't the end. Uh, it's the journey. The journey is where the lessons are. Yeah. But how you finish with the Lord, your, your condition with the Lord is all that matters. Yeah. Not how the journey looked or how many mistakes you made or didn't make. We just have to make it. We have to finish the race. Yeah. We have to yeah. get there on the Lord's side. But here's the, here's the warning. You don't know when the end of your race comes. What happens when your finish line gets put right there? Oh, you're at the end. But I thought I had so much time. I was going to fix things. And we're not talking about being good. We're talking about being with the Lord and letting his blood cover you. And truly, what, what does it say? If, if you love him, you keep his commandments. There is fruit to your life that is evidence that you are walking with the Lord. The finish line. That's where the celebration is. And it goes on for ever. <laughs> so these light momentary troubles do not compare to the glory that will be revealed in us. 
with the unseen. So, whether you need to get in the race, get back in the race, or just stay in the race, it's not about right now. It's not about the things that you wish were different in your life. That is so little compared to what am I doing for eternity? What am I sowing to see for eternity? What's kingdom minded? What am I doing that's going to last? It makes the other stuff so much less stressful. That's not how we're going to be judged anyway. When God looks at us, he says, did you know my son? Yes. Well, come on in. Not how many times did you make a mistake? Did you know my son? Yes. You're right. I know you did. This is how I know. You walked like him. You talked like him. You acted like him. And when you didn't, you came back to him. That's what's important. That's see the unseen. Look past the crud right now, because life is hard. Look past that. And go, but you know what? I'm going to do something today that's eternal minded. With the light of eternity. I'm going to think eternity. Because then it doesn't matter what credit score I die with. It doesn't matter. If I get all my medical bills paid before I go. If my student loans are still sitting there that I tried to pay. It doesn't matter. It doesn't matter if my house ever gets the paint on it that it needs. It doesn't matter if my yard looks worse than anybody in the neighborhood. It doesn't matter if my gray hairs stick out. I found a really good color person now. It's keeping me on track. Yeah. Except when she graduates and I'll lose track. So it doesn't really matter if you get that whatever you wanted. What are you doing for eternity? Because guess what? No one can take that away. Someone can steal your promotion. They can steal your car. They can even steal your catalytic converter right out from underneath your van while it's parked in the parking lot. That happened to us last week. Not us, but someone in my, at my work. I got to say about that. It's, a, it's like a coach who was close to basketball. When we get tired, he says, think of it as the last quarter. Mm -hmm. Think of it as the fourth quarter. Mm -hmm. And some people like to just like not run that extra that extra second down the court. Mm -hmm. You know, just think of it as the last quarter and mm -hmm. you should go on time. You gotta finish strong. Yeah. Doesn't matter how many times you fall, doesn't matter how bad it looks. Yeah. Right? So I just want to encourage you because this is a hard time of year. Oh. The pressure's coming. The bills haven't been paid, right? The relatives are rent, 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 right? There's a lot of pressure. And at the end of the day, what have you done that's going to last for eternity because all the rest is going to get burned up? Sorry, your trophies will be burned up. Your bank account, can't take it with you. So leave it to me. Leave me as a beneficiary. I'll take good care of it for you. Eternity. So don't give up. God's still working on us. It's a process. We can do it. We just have to finish strong. That's all. We just have to finish strong. Don't let this stuff, don't let this temporary stuff get you so down that it would cause you to even contemplate making your finish line now. Don't quit the race like that. Don't quit the race like that. You feel me, right? All right. Praise God. So if you're frustrated and very um, perplexed, beat down, persecuted, realize that you're not abandoned, you're not crushed, and you're not in despair. You're still standing. That means we can still finish. Amen? Amen. Amen. Be encouraged. See the unseen. The stuff that you can't see now is the stuff that's always going to last forever, so do that stuff. So cool. Do stuff you can't, like writing in invisible ink. <laughs> do that stuff. Do the invisible stuff. Do a kindness for someone that no one will know. And that will always last forever in your rewards in heaven, and you'll get it when you get there. That's what, it makes that stuff fun. It's like, yes, I can't lose the reward. I might not get that promotion. I might not get the office with the fireplace. <coughs> and my boss may always be in that other office next to me, destroying the company. <laughs> <laughs> but that's okay, because that's all going to burn up anyway. But how do I please my Father in heaven? That's what's going to matter. That's the job and the promotion that counts. That's what I have to focus on. I'm talking to me. That's what I have to focus on. Maybe that'll make tomorrow a little better. 
when I see the Maserati in the parking lot. <laughs> <laughs> I joke not. All right, I'm going to close this out in prayer. I love you guys. We'll see you back here on Friday. And I uh, just hope you have a good, encouraging week. Lord, I thank you for your word. I thank you that you love us enough to just focus on one thing a year, and you give us a whole year to try to figure it out. We hope, Lord God, that we have strived for the unseen. Thank you for revealing in little baby parts every week to us what the unseen is. You are the unseen. You last forever. You are eternal. You are faithful. You are all loving. And your love will last forever. Help us to pursue eternal things. Help us to get our mind off temporary things that it doesn't drag us so far down that we lose sight of what matters. And that's our soul, our salvation, and bringing as many into the kingdom as we can. Help us this week, remind us, touch us on the shoulder when there's an eternal thing we can do, seeds to sow, and kingdom work to do. Lord God, help us to focus our eyes on the unseen and not to be stumbling and, and, and falling over the things that we see. We thank you for that, Lord God. We thank you for your, your wisdom and your word in that. I ask a uh, blessing over each person who's here in their travels. I pray, Lord God, for healing over Chuck's uh, back. Thank you for strength, for, for restoring him. Thank you, Lord God, that his recovery will be brisk and easy, and he'll be able to move forward. Lord, I pray for Kim, who's uh, in a lot of pain right now. I pray for uh, her blood pressure. I pray for <coughs> her back and her hip for healing. I pray for Tony's dad right now who needs a full healing and strengthening, Lord God, where he is. Heal him, Lord God. Give the doctors wisdom. Protect him and his family. And I thank you for that. I, I just ask you, Lord God, as we lift our needs up to you, you already see what they are, but we're supposed to ask you anyway. And so we're asking you, Lord God, to heal our hurts, <coughs> make our provision, Lord God, and uh, continue to give us wisdom and guidance. And we just give these things all to you, and we thank you in Jesus' name. Amen. 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 See you later.